Thank you. Thank you. Good, good, bad, good. Thank you, Amy, for, uh, for letting us. This is kind of the, the, the quintessential of the, the, the quintessential venue for, for a movie like this. So, uh, all right. All right, there we go. But thank you again, Amy, for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can hear me, right? Yeah. 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 All right. So what we put out three years ago was uh, the world's first prequel in the Blair Witch universe, Legends of Birkenstock. Uh, and this kind of put us out there brand-wise. Uh, it's currently sitting at 8.1 on IMDb, a little under 40,000 views, well, a little under 40,000 views and 93 percent of ratio on IMDb. Uh, one Best Picture at a film festival in 2022, and then um, it's it kind of got some other ideas going. Uh, next slide. Legends of Burkittsville, I this was probably one of the first uh, business decisions, more or less, to start to see views go down and subscribers go down. So the original Legends of Burkittsville was never intended to have a sequel, but this past February, we threw one together in 13 days and it went over very well. I see a trailer for this tonight. All right. Um, and then a few original series that we've tossed around already, um, kind of the, the, the flagship show already is the uh, Jason Stones Weekly. It's just a digital magazine that comes out each week to, to subscribers. Um, falls on the one real fast. Um, and, uh, and, and a couple other series too to check out on YouTube. But, but um, the preludes that we've done leading into a new thing, we've shot seven different uh, prelude stories and they, uh, they're all anagram titles. So the first one is called Dreptown Hoya, the other teasing elitism. You scramble off the letters, it gives the ending of the movie. Uh, we'll see this, the, the one for this is the um, odd wonky mutation. Uh, the story is about them believing whether or not this guy who claims to be immortal is really immortal or is he just an odd wonky mutation. But there's two sides of the conflict here and they're both so pissed off at each other that they're looking through it. So you scramble up to admit you don't know. Just admit you don't know. And, and so many more conflicts would end, just in maybe you don't have the answer. But if these guys are so hell-bent on each other's, oh, it's odd monkey mutation either way. Screw the ground up. And so all the preludes have that secret inside there. No, oh, I'm sorry, the, all the anagram. So um, uh, another example, teasing elitism, the, the origin story of Weaver's character. She's, uh, she's getting a, 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 a carrot dangled in front of her, teasing elitism. She's teasing this elite lifestyle. But the lesson you learn at the end of the movie is that stealing is time. That's what it scribbles up to. So when you take someone from something, or you take something from someone, you're not stealing their stuff, you're stealing their time. They can't ever get that back. You know, you, you stole my money. I can get more money, but now I've lost all my time looking for it. So that's the message that in that movie today, is that when you're stealing something, you're stealing time. But, but those seven movies now line up to the, the feature film we're debuting tonight in unison, uh, which the trailer you saw before. So before we get into that, and before we do that, we're going to talk about where energy is going next, and that is going to be Dylan Hayden's chapter one. Um, I'm going to hang up here too, I've got announcements. I've sure. lost my notes, I've lost my notes, but I'll, I'll be brief, I'll be brief. I would, they were meant to keep me on, on pace because I'll just talk up here forever. So what we're doing, what we're doing with our what we're doing with that. What we're doing with our movies is catering them to the venue. Okay, so um, think of it more like screening a comedy in a comedy club with live stand-up intermittent. Uh, an authentic medieval film produced in old, real old English and screening it under the stars at a rent fest, that kind of thing. So what it, what it does is gives us the ability to not necessarily go to practical theaters where ultimately that's the goal, but, but we could still sell out venues when it's capacity 2025 because it's a little bit more of an intimate experience and it's, it's, it's interactive. So having said that, when uh, we will announce where the horror movie will be screened, that venue uh, in, in the trailer after the movie and then, um, so in unison, we saw the trailer for it. We saw it, it's, it's a ton of weird stuff. I'll give you kind of like the, the, the rundown of it. It's $15,000 shot on an iPhone, the same one, um, using only practical light and natural light, and, and uh, only iPhone sound. So is it going to sound like this Top Gun Maverick stuff? No, it's going to be a very raw, rough movie you're seeing tonight, okay? Um, but it, if, if, 
it's, it's, it's intended to make you th think a little bit about stuff that you wouldn't normally do. Is it, it's, it's, it's a very much, let's get high and watch the news and kind of, it's not gonna be wide over dazzling hundreds of people at a time. This is a very intimate movie. Um, Concept of Stream was three years. Had the idea um, around the same time I met Amy and I said, uh, I, I, I have this really cool idea for a feature. And she said, I have this really cool idea for the basement of my art gallery. Yeah. Flash forward, here we are. And, and it was true that she said, if you ever want a screen, because we want to use that space for that kind of stuff. We kind of just stayed in contact. And then I, I said, your, mood, your music is fitting perfectly into my short film called Panic. Let me check my bandmates and yeah, yeah, use our music. Yeah, we're just super stoked that it's getting back out there. So I had to text her again. So that, this is a unison thing's getting bigger than I thought. Are you sure? So and unbelievably, two albums of music. That is unprecedented. So I want to lead that into the two announcements that I'm happily making tonight. So um, I was very much not necessarily anti film festivals. I could just tell after my experiences, I'm not a film festival guy. Uh, they're, they're very much in, in the vein of, of, I can see the inner machinations and I don't want to be a part of it. But I, that, that can't be a reason for me not to submit in unison. And I think I, I had some, uh, some really good um, meditation on that this week and I, I, I am submitting it to film festivals and for two specific categories for consideration. Best Music Yvetto and Best Supporting Actor Dylan Higgins. So I will, I will submit it. For those reasons, I will submit it so when it gets in there, it's going to be best music, best supporting acting. So we have that. And now the other news, the other announcement, Blindside You, the anti-death laws, congratulations, you're the lead. Yes. Yeah. Dylan will be playing a character by the name of Sewell, S-E-W-L-L, -L. Sewell Leavings, and uh, he, he, he he plays a, a uh, blue collar guy who works as a, uh, a dock worker for a large factory. And you wind up coming into contact with a guy you never thought you'd make contact with. Rain Garb. That's my name. <laughs> Rain Garb. Rain oh, Rain Bragg. Rain Bragg. Rain Bragg. Rain Bragg. Rain Bragg. Yep. So, congratulations. First lead role, man. So, the way